Hello and welcome. This video is part of a series. This is video number two. Be sure to check out the previous video in the series. There should be a link in the description to the full playlist. And I'm trying to very quickly go over some basic uh, shell script commands for Bash. And I went way longer than I did last time. I do have previous videos that go into more detail. I'm going to try to be a little bit quicker with this. So if I'm going too fast, uh, watch my previous series where I go a little bit slower. Uh, so let's go ahead and just open up the script we've created so far. Basically, we're printing stuff to the screen, reading stuff, and then um, printing that back to the screen with a few screen clears and sleeping. So real quick, we're going to say echo hello, and it echoes to the screen. If I want to dump that into a file for saving, so real quick, if I ls, I'll list every uh, uh, file in the directory I'm in. If I say hello world, if I do a greater than symbol, I'm going to redirect that into whatever file I give it. And I'll just call this my.log, because I'm logging stuff. Now, if I cat out, cat will display whatever's inside a file. I can say cat my log, and it just says hello. If I go back up to here, and I say hello world, now it's going to dump hello world in that file. If we cat that out, you can see it says hello world, but we lost our first line of hello. So what we need to do if we want to append to a file, so we're writing to a file when we do the greater than symbol. If we do greater than, greater than, it's going to append to that file, meaning adding a new line. So here I'll just say, hello, John. And now if I cat out that file, you can see it says, hello world, hello, John. And now I can say, hello, oops, hello, Tom. And if I cat that out, it's going to say, hello world, hello, John, hello, Tom. So real quick. If I was to say name, or let's do the read command, read what is your name, and we want to have a um, P here, what is your name, and we're going to put that in the variable name, we can say Bob, and then I can say echo, hey, dollar sign name, and I can pipe that into our log file, uh, log. Now if I cat out my log, you can see, hey, Bob's at the end. And if I read name again, this time I'll say Tim. And then I can pipe that into, or sorry, redirect that, append it to our file. I can now append that to the file as well. So let's go ahead and go back into our script. Now that you know how to write to a file, which it will create a file, either of these will create a file if it doesn't exist. Um, my program. So again, I'm using Vim. Use whatever text editor you're comfortable with. Uh, I'm going to clear the screen. Hello world. What is your name? Hello, whoever. Sleep for two seconds. Clear the screen. Uh, how old are you? And then it's going to say name is so many years old. And then I'm going to clear the screen. Sleep and clear the screen. But let's say after getting the name, the age, I want to log that to a file. What I'll do here is I'll just say echo, and I'll say. Uh, dollar sign name, and then I'll say comma dollar sign age, and I'm going to append that to a file which we'll call people.log. Again, the extension doesn't mean anything, it's a plain text file, but that's just to let you know it's a log file. So now I can run my script. What is your name? I'll say Chris. What is your age in a second? 48. I'm not 48. <laughs> Goodbye, uh, and I'll run that again. This time I'll say John, and I'll say John is 99. And of course, we're getting the same output. As far as the end user is concerned, this is the same script as before. I'll say Tim, and I'll say Tim is 23. But now I can cat out uh, my people log file, and you can see I've logged those people's names and their ages, uh, which is great. Uh, so another way you can append to a file is using the T command, T-E-E, -E, uh, which is a common command, which is commonly on many systems. And what T does is it allows you to view what's being added to a file. Uh, and you can use T-A to append to file. So again, uh, control L to clear the screen. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, 
pipe here. So I don't think I've talked about piping yet. Basically, one of the strong things about shell scripting is you can take the output of one command and do what's called piping, basically taking that and putting that into the input of another command. And by doing that, you're using the pipe symbol, which on a QWERTY keyboard, it's going to be usually above your enter key. It's the same key as the backslash, but you have to hit shift, and it looks like that. It's just a straight line up and down. Sometimes we'll have a little break in the middle, but that's a pipe symbol. So if I use the T command, so again, let me say I wanted to echo test, and I want to put that into a file called file. I can now cat out file. It says test. If I run that again, but I'll say test this, well, now it's going to say test this. But you notice that when I'm writing that command, I'm echoing test, but we're not seeing t test this on the screen. It's going directly into that file. Uh, but not being displayed screen. Let's say you want to display it to the screen, but then also put it into a file at the same time. Well, that's what the T command does. So let's go ahead and clear the screen again. And this time, instead of using greater than symbols, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say pipe into T and then give it the file name. And now when I hit enter, you can see it displays that message on the screen, but it also put it into the file command. And if I run that again, test this, I'll say test this out. You see it says test this out, and if we cat it, you can see it's now replaced that. So we've written to that file, we didn't append to that file. If you want to use T and append to the file, all you have to do is use the dash A. So basically what this is doing is it's saying echo this, uh, test this out. We're taking that output of test this out, we're putting it into T. T is displaying that at the screen, in this case it's going to also append it to this file. So I'm going to do that, and we'll do that a couple of times. And now if I cut out that file, you can see that it's all there. Let's go ahead and change our message just to demonstrate again. And we'll do another one with this. And now if I cut out that file, you can see that it has appended to it. So that's very useful if you want to view the output, but also have it go into a file and you don't want to have to do like an echo command twice. So the T command is very useful in that aspect. So again, it's a very common tool. Uh, it's T. Uh, to put it into a file, t-a to append to a file. So, so far uh, we have been able to print things to the screen with echo. We were able to get user input. We were able to take that user input, print the screen, put it into a file, print a screen, and put it into a file. Now let's, and we've also used the cat command to view the entire file. But let's say we want to look for a particular line. Well, we have the grep command. Oh, which has so many uses. I'm just going to show you the very, very basic uh, uh, usage of it. So again, if I cat out uh, my, we'll use people log as an example here. We have this, but let's say I just want a line that says John. What I can do is I can say grep, and then I can say in quotations, you don't need the quotations, but again, it's a good idea, uh, John, and I can say people.log. So now it's going to look at the people.log and only return lines that say John. Let me go ahead and open up people.log and I'm going to add another line. I'll say John as a different John, I guess. I'll say that he's 77. Now, if I do grep John people log, it's gonna show both those lines. And if I come in here and I add another line, I'll add one that says John's son. Well, let's give him an age too, I guess. If I now grab John, it's going to show the line with Johnson because it has a match. Match Johnson has the word John in it. If I just want lines that say Johnson, I can just look for Johnson, and it's going to ignore ones that say John. Now, here's one more example. Uh, Vim. I'm going to say, let's say this John was written with a lowercase J. Now, if I look for John, it's not going to show up because it's case sensitive. If I said John. with a lowercase j, that one's going to show up, but the other two are going to show up. But if I do dash i, what that's going to do is tell grep to be case insensitive. Do not care about the case of the letters. So now it will find all the lines with John on it, whether it's John, Johnson, capital J, lowercase j, uh, it does not care. Again, this is a very basic example. Check out my, my website, go to filmsbychris.com uh, and just type in grep. I have very in-depth tutorials with grep, there's a lot of other things could do. Uh, one more thing grep can do, again, this is just a quick overview. Let's say I wanted any line that doesn't have the word John on it. 
I can do dash V, which inverts the search. So now it's showing every line that doesn't have John with a lowercase j. If I do capital J here, it's going to find every line that doesn't contain John with a capital J. And of course, I can combine these. I can say uh, dash I dash V, so saying case insensitive, display all lines that don't have John. And now it's only going to display the lines that don't have John. Again, grep has lots of uses. This is just a quick overview of some of the more common things you might do with, with grep. So we've been able to print things to the screen, get user input, print that to the screen, save it to a file, uh, display the entire file, and then find particular lines in the file. Uh, one more thing I'm going to go over, and again, I'm going over these commands real quick, but I have more thorough videos on them, is the cut command. If I was to say cut, I can say cut with a delimiter, so dash D, delimiter, uh, and whatever character I want. And depending on the character, I usually always just do a backslash because some of the characters you might use are special characters. I'm going to say backslash comma, uh, which I don't think you need the backslash for comma, but you do for like the pipe symbol or maybe uh, a dollar sign, for example. Uh, so this is saying take uh, the file that I'm giving it and cut it into columns based on the, do on the comma there. And I'm going to say dash F one in this case, I just want the first field. So the F is for field. So now I can give it the file name of people. And what it's going to do is it's just going to show that first column. Okay. If I wanted to see the second column, I can see, say, field two. And now it's just showing me the ages. Uh, and we can combine this with the grep command. So what I could do, uh, I could say instead of doing cut and giving it that file name, I can pipe into it. So as we talk about pipe, we're taking the output of one command and putting it into another. Let's say I just want the age of Tim. I can say grep for Tim in our file of people.log, and I can pipe that into this. So now I can see get Tim's age. Obviously, if there was more Tim or if there were other people with Tim in their names, we would get more than one line. Uh, Again, this is just very basic stuff. Obviously, each line, if you're actually doing something like this, well, if you're really doing something like this, you probably want to use a database. But even if you're using a plain text file, you want to give each line its own unique ID of some sort. We're not going to look at this in this tutorial. But what we're going to do is here, we got Tim's age. And if I want Chris's age, I can say Chris. And I can see Chris is 48. So again, if I got rid of the second command, that's just going to find the line that has Chris. And then the cut command is saying, uh, use the delimiter of comma, cut it into fields. In this case, field two, I got Chris's age. If I did field one, I can get Chris's name. So if I want to, I can say here, instead of Chris, I could go, okay, I want to see everybody who's 48. And it will display whoever's 48. Uh, let me go into my people file here. And let's just make two people 48. So I'll make uh, this John and Chris both 48. So here I can say find any line that has 48 in it. And I'm going to cut it so we're only showing names. So I should theoretically get a list of people who are 48. Boom. So that is some quick examples. Again, uh, this, these are basic examples. And you'll use commands similar to this in the real world, but not these exact commands. Because, for example, you would never put someone's age <laughs> into a file like this. So I don't want to say never. You normally wouldn't. You would put their birth date and then use your code to calculate how old they are. because your age is going to change. If my birthday is tomorrow, my age is going to change. Are you going to go back and, and update everyone whose birthday just happened today every day if you have a bunch of people in there? No. You put their birth date in and you calculate out from there. Anyway, so that is a basic command, uh, a few basic commands to get you started. Again, I'm going over these quickly, showing you, demonstrating how they can work. I have videos more in depth. Go to filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There you can search through all my videos. Type grep type cut, and you should get a list of videos that, that I, where I go over these things in more detail. I do thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.